Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB foundation level certification. We are in chapter three talking about static testing. And as a part of this tutorial, we are continuing ahead with 3.2, that is feedback and review process. And today we shall be covering the next segment under this topic, that is 3.2.4, review types. And here you'll get to understand how exactly different documentation can undergo review but not so formal as we discussed earlier. As we all understand, of course, different documentations are not exactly the same. Some documents are very critical, some documents are lightweight, some documents are heavyweight, and sometimes some documentations are just limited to your internal team. Sometimes things are limited to multiple stakeholders as well. As the documents are so different and distinct from each other, how can one review type will be used or enough to test or review any type of documentation? Certainly, we cannot put a very heavyweight process like the one we covered in our previous tutorial, that is formal review process, to review any type of documentation. For example, if I have to compare a project plan versus test case, these two are totally different from each other. When I talk about the project plan, it consists of a lot of detailed information about the whole project schedule, the plan of action, the different activities and the people, the resources and whatnot, the budget, time frame, and everything. But when it comes to test case, which is also another work product, but it's just limited to testing team or to a certain extent to developers as well. So only two people would be just enough to talk about this particular documentation and the other stakeholders may not be just worried about what is the test case all about. However, I might be worried about test plan being a project manager, development manager, design manager, and so on. So every single document is different from each other. And certainly one heavyweight process of review cannot be applied at every single place. So in that context, this particular topic will help you learn and understand about what are the different types of review process and how exactly we can make use of it. So let's quickly get into the screen and try understanding that what exactly are these review types and how they are different from each other. The number one point here is to talk about the introduction. So there may exist many review types ranging from informal reviews to formal reviews. The required levels of formality depends on factors such as SDLC being followed, the maturity of the development process, the criticality and complexity of the work product uh, being reviewed, legal or regulatory requirements, and the need for an audit trade. Now, the most important thing here to talk about is that it's just not one factor which I just told you. Indeed, there are many other factors. If you're talking about Agile, I may not have a lot of time to conduct formal review process because it's a very light process altogether. And certainly I cannot invest a lot of time going through documentation review. Makes sense, right? But if I talk about waterfall model, I have literally a lot of time and I can certainly utilize this time to do a formal review at every single document. Same way, if I talk about the criticality, I talk about the regulatory requirements, contractual requirements and whatnot. Now, regulatory and standards certainly do drive. If my ISO demands me to conduct the static testing for such particular documentations, then even if I don't want to do that, I have to do it because it would be one of the flaws or findings when it comes to the audit or review of ISO. So in that context, it is very critical and important for me to understand how this works well, right? So all the factors should be taken into account by any team, any organization in order to select what type of review should be followed. Further to add here, we talk about the same work product can be reviewed with different review types. Initially, you can start with informal, but later you can have more formal review as type as well. Also selecting the right review type is the key to achieving the required review objective. That means you just can't apply a random type whenever you want, but you should be very much selective in terms of what you would need to do for which type of document. Also, the selection is not only based on the objective, but also on factors such as project needs, available resources, work product types and risk, business domain and company culture. And putting up all together with our previous point also, we have many such factors which should be taken into account to define about the appropriate review type. So let's have a look on the different review types which we have and how they are different from each other. However, these are very, very high level. I'll try to give you something unique about each type of review. And trust me, that unique point could help you a lot in getting the right answer during the examination. 
because when they ask you match the following <laughs> then the unique points help you a lot or sometimes they give you a five pointer question and ask you hey what review are we talking about then that particular unique point would be very very helpful so let's quickly have a look on what types of review we are talking about and the review types here we include we have major four types of review of course there are no minor minor could be very very casual or informal ones but mainly there are four types of review the four types of review include informal walkthrough technical review and inspection starting from the least formal to the highest formal review that is inspection just for your kind information just make a note of it the formal review process which you covered in the previous tutorial is exactly as that of inspection that means inspection is fully formal review so if you know what is formal review process you know what is inspection or if you know what is inspection you know what is formal review process so you don't have to learn it separately as two different topics if you know what is formal review process you know what is inspection let's start with informal review the very first review here we have is informal informal review do not follow a defined process and do not require a formal documented output the main objective is detecting anomalies now taking a quick example here of course the word is very self explanatory sorry the statement is very self explanatory but uh, giving you a quick example assume that i am a tester 1 writing test cases right and i want someone to review it because i am a human a human is error prone i can do mistakes so before we put it in the repository or go for executions we ask one of our colleague to review that now this involves just two people t1 and t2 tester 1 and tester 2 to get involved in this review if tester 2 has anything in findings he will let the tester 1 know that hey just fix this thing and that's all good to go and that's it so it does not involve more than two people it could be just between t1 and t2 or it could be between tester 1 and test lead who will be reviewing the work product to some extent we also call it as buddy checks okay buddy checks so informal review is very very useful in agile methodology because uh, we have to do it as a part of preventing defects but we can't be very very formal so in that context these are very lightweight no formal documentation no formal process and it's just conducted between two people so the unique point is no formal process and just two people involved which you call it as buddy check also let's move on to the next one the next one here is called as walk through a walk through which is led by the author can serve many objectives such as evaluating quality and building confidence in the work product educating reviewers gaining consensus generating new ideas motivating and enabling authors to improve and detect anomalies reviewers might perform an individual review before the walk through but this is not required now here if you just differentiate between each of these points you would get many key points here number 1 the walk through is a type of review which is led by the author itself but if you know the formal review process there is a trained moderator or facilitator who is responsible to lead the review okay informal review but when it comes to walk through it's an author that means the person who has written the document itself is leading the review so there is no moderator there is no facilitator there is no review leader is just the author who is taking control over the entire review process the second important point what we found here is that individual review before the meeting is not mandatory it's optional so if you want people to you know go through the preparation before you want to have a meeting with them you can always do that but it is not completely mandatory additionally if i look here we also talk about the objectives which are very key important things that is the why do we do it so you can do it for gaining consensus like audience poll like hey what should we do about this or generating new ideas you want to do something as a work around you can look forward to that and enabling authors to improve that means over a period of time you may look forward to improve the way the documentations are being written and that would be of great help right so unique point here is it is led by author okay that's completely unique here it is not anywhere else that means not in any other type of review the third important thing is technical review and the technical review is performed by technically qualified reviewers and led by moderator now here you can very well notice that moderator is coming into picture to lead the review and performed by technical experts that is subject matter experts of the technical domains will be the reviewers not just like anyone blindly being invited so the unique points are right on your you know first thought right now the very first line that is the technical experts will be the reviewer and second you will have the moderator but it's not moderator is not unique the reason is it is also mandatory in inspection so keep in mind technical review is conducted by technical experts
which doesn't happen anywhere else. Also to add here, the objective of technical review are to gain consensus and make decisions regarding a technical problem, but also to detect anomalies, evaluate quality, build confidence in the work product, generate new ideas, and to motivate the enable authors to improve. That means these objectives do remain common throughout, but however, there are something very important for us to take into account. Last but not the least, when we come to inspection, inspection is the fully formal review process as inspection is the most formal type of review. They follow the complete generic process what we discussed in earlier topic. The main objective is to find maximum number of anomalies. Other objectives are to evaluate quality, build confidence in the work product and to motivate and enable others to improve, which is pretty common among other types of review. Matrices are collected and used to improve the SDLC, including the inspection process. In inspection, the author cannot act as a review leader or scribe. That means there will be standard dedicated roles and roles and responsibility. The whole process will be followed as per the formal review process, like entry criteria, exit criteria, making use of matrices to gather the effectiveness and success rate of the review process. And there will be standard roles like manager, moderator, author will be only responsible to uh, collect, the, collect the anomalies and fix them, but not responsible to play the role of moderator or something. So if you differentiate between, so now inspection has unique points as entry, exit, rules and checklist, roles and responsibility. All these becomes unique point of inspection because these are not mandatory in the other three types of review. So given that we have understood what are the four different types of review, how these are applicable, right? And how they get applied in the reality, that would be of great help for you to answer a quick question right from here, right? So that's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.